Hello and welcome to Artist Talks for When We See Us, an art exhibition and sale for emerging Arkansas artists at Hearn Fine Art, featuring Adasia Cooper, Ebony Blevins, and Perion Hurd. Um, today we are going to hear from Adasia Cooper. Um, we're excited to hear from the mixed media artist. Um, I'm going to read her bio and then she's going to take it away with the presentation. And then we'll have a conversation covering some questions that uh, did not get answered in the presentation. And then we'll open the floor to anyone who would like to, um, you know, ask Adesha any questions. Uh, before we get started, definitely want to um, introduce our show. Once again, um, Emerging Arkansas Artists, when we see us, uh, it ends March 19th. So we definitely welcome you to come in and view the show uh, to see the range of mediums that this uh, creative community has to offer. So definitely um, try to come in. If you cannot, we definitely welcome you to go online to www.hernfineart.com um, just to see the images from the show. And of course, we thank you for joining us for the Artist Talks. <clears throat> So it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Miss Adasia Cooper. Hello. Uh, Adasia. Adasia Cooper is an award-winning uh, artist from Little Rock, Arkansas. Since the age of 17, she has experimented with bright colors and immersive portraits and has fallen in love with painting ever since. Um, she was accepted into governor's school during the summer of 2017, where she further developed her skills with acrylics and oils, along with winning multiple state competitions for art, including the Arkansas Young Artists Association. She has been to national competitions competing with her paintings, um, including third place in the painting category at the national NAACP AXO competition in Detroit in 2019. She has been published in multiple books and magazines. Some of her pieces are currently being displayed at local galleries, including her fine art uh, and coffee shops around the state. Uh, with Adasia being of African-American descent, she uses her experiences as a Black woman living in America as inspiration for her art. Um, and she will tell us more about um, that art. I'm excited uh, to hear. So everyone put your virtual hands together uh, for Miss Adasia Cooper. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start the presentation. Okay. So hi, my name is Adasia Cooper. I am a Little Rock artist, and thank you so much for coming to the Artist Talk. So a little bit of background information. I was born in Magnolia, Arkansas, and in, at around first grade, I moved to Little Rock. And um, some of my high school experience, I graduated from Little Rock Central High School, and that's where I actually took my first art class. It was a drawing class in the 10th grade in a painting class in the 12th grade. And while I was there, I also attended Governor's School in Girl State. And Governor's School had a really big impact on my artwork. And it really taught me a lot of techniques that I use today. While in high school, I also went to the National EXO competition that's hosted by the NAACP. And I won bronze for a painting that I did. And that experience was really eye opening because I was surrounded by hundreds of talented black students and just being able to see other black artists at such a large scale and um, it really it really inspired me to just want to create more. Also while in high school I was the team leader 
on the Elizabeth Eckford Bench Project, which was a project that really um, inspired me to want to create in different ways. Um, and currently I'm a junior at Hendricks College and I'm an art major and a business minor. A little bit more background. So I've always been an artist from a really young age. I can remember being in elementary school and I would like look at other students' eyes and I would like try and draw them and do little mini commissions for them. Um, I would also love to do um, like comic book strips with my friends and like trade them and make a little comic book series. And I always loved like creating my own characters. So I would always try and find a creative way to um, like spice up my schoolwork. So whether it be an, an English project or a math project, I would always love to find something to do that'll make it more creative, more fun. Um, so like I said, I first started painting in high school and one really big um, inspiration and like big mentor that um, first really shaped my art career was Mr. Rick Stallone. He taught me um, my last year in high school or an advanced painting class. And it was it was an amazing class, but it really just taught me like, wow, you know, there's a lot for me to learn. <laughs> so um, that was another big um, stepping point. And ever since, you know, I became more consistent and started trying new styles and techniques and incorporating different elements inside of my artwork, I began to love it even more. And I have loved it ever since. So here is an example of some of my work. Um, this is one of my, my first paintings that I ever did. And, you know, I was really just trying to like step out and um, incorporate different elements and it had meaning to me. And I think I, I use like craft paint with this painting. Um, and I still love this painting, but one of my most recent paintings, you can still kind of see um, certain elements like the pose and the vibrant colors and the complementary colors that I still like to use today. So a little bit of inspiration. Um, one thing that um, I'm inspired by is my are my jobs. I'm currently um, a worker at the Wingate Museum of Art. And so I'm constantly surrounded by artwork every day. One of my jobs is to install artwork and to help research different local artists. So I'm constantly, you know, finding um, not just other artists, but also sources of inspiration. I'm also a worker at the Hendrix Darkroom on campus. And so um, it's film photography. So just watching the process and seeing students, you know, come back out of the darkroom with developed pieces is just really inspiring as well. Um, another way that I get inspiration is by looking at what my favorite artists are doing. And this all, this includes Mr. Rex Deloney. I'm always like stalking his page, seeing what new paintings he has. And um, it, it really helps me to um, get inspired to create more. Other things that I take inspiration from are music videos and movies and even books. And I love taking walks just to clear my mind. And because a clear mind really helps me to just draw inspiration, you know, seemingly from nowhere. And finally, learning about our history and learning about current events is extremely important for me. And to the right is an example of this. This painting is titled Day 13. And actually my little sister who's in the picture helped me paint this. And it was inspired by the coronavirus and the effect that it had on students specifically and artists. So in the background, it's like a chalkboard and you see like different numbers which were actually really early numbers um, when I created it. And it has um, kind of like a, a childlike feeling to it, but also has that sadness from an artist that feels like it's really hard to create when times feel so dark. So here are examples of other paintings. Um, to the top left is a painting titled To Glisten. And it's a portrait of my cousin. And that painting 
I really just wanted to experiment with what water would look like on darker skin. And so um, I used a lot of, a lot of uh, acrylic and oil paints to try and build up those textures and especially in the hair. And underneath that is a commission painting. And I also do the same thing, trying to build up those layers as much as possible. And in the center is a portrait of Erica Badu. And this one is actually featured at um, Hearn Fine Art right now. And uh, one thing that I love to do, which I took inspiration from Mr. Deloney, is incorporate complementary colors as much as possible in my artwork. So there's like a lot of vibrant blues and oranges, not only in the background, but also in the figure. And to the top right, I have day 13 again, and underneath it is a mural for Black Lives Matter, which is at Little Rock Central High School right now. And speaking of murals, um, my first mural that I did is titled Ain't I a Woman? and it is located on 7th Street. Um, this mural took about 15 to 20 hours to create. I remember I got the phone call to say, yeah, you can do a mural on Wednesday night, I think. And by Friday night, I had a sketch, three different sketches for an idea that I wanted to do. And by Saturday morning, I, I had woken up at like eight o'clock and I started working. So um, it took the entire weekend, but I finished it and there's my beautiful family there supporting it. And the painting was inspired by another painting that I did um, that I showed previously, day 13. And this time I wanted it to focus on black women who have been affected negatively by the medical system, by the, um, the um, judicial system, by the police, um, by police brutality. And so I just wanted that painting to be dedicated to them. But um, after I painted it, um, shortly after I painted it, it was defaced and completely painted over um, twice. It was painted over twice. But you know, thankfully the community came to um, came to the rescue and you know cleaned it up as much as possible. There are a lot of um, really nice comments and um, people just coming to drive by just to support, um, which really like help uplift the spirits, not only of me, but of people who really love the mural. So what was meant to try and destroy the message really brought the community together and reinforced why I painted the mural in the first place. So here are a few paintings of that month of work. The top left is the second time that it was painted over. And the middle picture are um, some people that helped to come and try and scrub off the paint that was used to deface it. And here are some more examples of my work. Since the murals, it was very difficult to try and um, get more um, enthusiastic about creating work, especially that work that would be for the public. But um, here's a painting that I did on the left for the Williams Library, um, for the Central Arkansas Library System. And I also did another mural afterwards, which is located in Conway at the neighborhood pet shop. And at the bottom is an installation, well, a temporary installation that I did at Hendricks College, which are victims of police brutality. And the card series. Um, the card series, um, which is titled Two Sides of the Same Card, was an idea that I wanted to create that would show how different Black historical figures and cultural figures are juxtaposed against each other and seen as like completely opposite, but really they may have a lot more in common. The first, um, the first card that I did was of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, which is kind of obvious because their ideas are always rivaled against each other. And um, I just wanted to show that, even though it may seem that way, really at the end of their life, um, which they died at the same age, they had a lot more in common as far as their beliefs. 
than people would sometimes acknowledge. Um, of course, I also did Tupac and Biggie, and um, the third one that I did was Nina Simone and Lauren Hill. And so the other ones, they're um, very similar. They are either like rap duos or um, movie icons that are really just always compared, but or always contrasted, but they have a lot in common. And some of these are actually on display right now at the gallery. So in the future, um, some goals that I have are to definitely create more. Um, after the murals, like I said, it was very difficult for me to try and pull myself out of that um, artist block. But um, thanks to me being an art major, I definitely will have more time to create more paintings, um, even if it is for academic reasons. And another goal I have is to be proud of the paintings that aren't masterpieces. A lot of times if I'm not painting something that I know for sure is gonna be incredible, then I won't be proud of showing it or showing even just the process. And another goal that I have is to create more murals. Now that I'm trying to gain my confidence back, um, that's something that I would love to continue doing. And finally, I would love to create a children's book, um, hopefully by the time that I graduate from Hendrix. And I just want it to be in, um, geared towards Black children and show like everyday life um, and maybe even have like a teaching moment for them. Okay, and here's my contact information if you would like to know more about my process or look at other uh, works that I have done. And thank you so much. Awesome, I'm here. <laughs> So, um, with your talent and, you know, with your mentorship, um, did you consider um, art school out of state? Did you, you know, what was your thought process about choosing higher education uh, when it came to being an art major? Gotcha. Um, in my last year of high school, I, I was taking a couple art classes and um, I had the brilliant guidance of Mr. Deloney, but I wasn't certain if I would continue down the art path as far as like a career. And my decision to go to school was purely based on you know, scholarship. <laughs> um, so Hendrix was like the great option for me. And even my freshman year, like I, I was still convinced that I would probably go to medical school um, like a pharmacist. So um, it wasn't until the beginning of my junior year, which I finally decided and locked in that I'll be an art major. But by that time I had taken, you know, more than enough art classes. So um, yeah, it, it definitely did take a, a while for me to even commit to it. So by the time that it, you know, by the end of high school, I, art school wasn't really a, a, you know, it wasn't really a option for me. Okay, understandable. I understand how different paths can lead you to different places. Um, <clears throat> can you talk about your um, experience as an artist in the Central Arkansas community? Um, just some of the, I know you talked about some of the murals and projects that you've been a part of, but um, just talk about the scene and um, uh, if you have found any allies and where do you see the community going? Where do you see it at? Like, what what is your take on the Central Arkansas creative community? So um, I definitely feel like it's, is growing like I see a lot of um, growth for sure, especially in the last few years. Um, one big, I guess, ally that I would have would be the Seven Street Mural like group, the collective. Um, like when the vandalized, um, when the vandalism happened, 
they were like my biggest heroes and they were the ones you know who were up and scrubbing the walls when it first got defaced they were so supportive and since then they've you know we've had numerous events and like artists artists um excuse me artistry you know events um that's taken place there and the group is just is so welcoming um another I guess source I would say would be you know just local friends that I have um people that I went to governor school with um I have one good friend his name is Trent he um he and I used to sell prints like downtown Little Rock you know on Friday nights and all days on Saturdays so um, we really tried to like build, you know, a network with other artists there. Um, so I guess, you know, those would be like the biggest two. This might be a better question for your parents and for your mom or your family, but what did they think when you decided I'd like to be an art major? Um, I like to pursue art. Um, I want to be an artist. I know you said that you had always been an artist, even at a young age. So can you talk about the environment you grew up in, but then when you decided to transition to this possibly being a profession? Sure. Um, well, I just want to say I have a really creative family, um, like extremely creative and They've always been extremely supportive of any type of creative endeavor that I wanted to do. Um, but specifically like my mother, she's, you know, she just wants me to make sure that whatever that, whatever field I go into that I pursue it to my greatest ability, whether it's medical school, whether, it, whether it's, you know, me becoming an artist. Um, she always saw potential in what I wanted to do. So, once I finally made up my mind, she was extremely supportive and um, my entire family, you know, are extremely supportive of it. I know there's, there's a lot of like, um, I don't know, just a lot of people that I meet that would, you know, say, wow, you're an art major, you know, at Hendrix, which, you know, I understand, but, um, you know, I, I, I hope that you know this will really help me down the line i'm confident that it will i definitely feel you i definitely feel you um <clears throat> so my next question um is just really talking about um sort of a hot topic as the youngest artist featured in this exhibit and um someone who grew up in a lot of technology. Um, do you think that you will embrace NFTs? Um, do you think technology will make its way into your work? Do you feel like you'll always be a traditional, I want a canvas, I want, um, you know, a paintbrush, acrylics, oils? What's your take? That's a great question. I I don't know a lot about NFTs. Um, I barely know what they stand for, but I um, I would I wouldn't you know cross that out as far as like possibilities in the future. Um, I think that you know like you said, as technology develops, that you know artists will try and find a way to you know use it to our ability. And um, even though like I paint for the most part, I would just consider myself you know. Oh, I try to be as well-rounded as possible as far as like what I'm learning. Um, so when it comes to printmaking or um, film photography or, you know, just charcoal drawings, um, that's something that I think will be really hard to replicate with technology. Um, but I'll also use digital um, drawings to try and help with, you know, um, larger scale paintings or murals. But as far as, you know, just completely going digital, I don't see myself doing that. I, I do appreciate the traditional art process. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, this is a question that I ask uh, Perion. Um, I know that you are also a muralist um, and 
on your aspiration list, you said you wanted to do more murals. Um, has there ever been a point where you wanted to, you know, take any of your personal works, you know, anything that's in the gallery right now and take it to mural size, maybe the card series? Um, or has there ever been a mural that you wanted to really reclaim, you know, back to the canvas and, you know, sell? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Actually, with Ain't I a Woman, um, I did really want to transfer or even make like a digital, you know, replication on canvas with it. But I feel some things really just deserve to have its own space and, you know, deserves to be, you know, left alone. Um, with, the, with that mural specifically, it has so much history. Um, if you ever visit it, like there's still like the paint that was used to vandalize it on the sidewalks all around it. Um, and that's something that you just can't cre recreate on a canvas. Um, but as far as putting paintings that I've made originally onto a wall, um, that is what I did with In I Woman, but you know, it wasn't exactly the same painting. Um, but that process was really nice, actually. You know, it was just so simple. I had the, you know, the original concept and all I had to do was, you know, put it on a wall um, and put my new idea on it. But other paintings like the card series, I could see it. The only thing is you can't flip it, you know, to see the other person which, you know, kind of the purpose gets a little bit lost, but um, other paintings I would, I would definitely love to see. Maybe like a Badu mural somewhere would be cool. <laughs> Have you been approached to put the card series on cards? Because anybody said, hey, I can the deck of cards with them on it, like a full series, you know, do all the civil rights do all the music people, mm -hmm. has anybody approached you yet? <laughs> would yeah, you do it? <laughs> I would, I would love to. Uh, it would just be a little difficult because, you know, I have like, I think five Kings maybe. And then I made up some letters like the Martin and Malcolm piece has an X on it uh, for his, his initial. And so um, I would love to do it. I would just definitely have to make some changes to it. And, you know, of course, like paint more, but that would be an awesome idea. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I'm just jumping around different uh, deck of questions. Um, your subjects are Black, proudly Black, um, historically Black. Um, you identify as a Black artist. Um, when it comes to just that identification and that coming through in your work, um, just talk about just how you um, work out that identity um, and what that means to you and your work. That's a good question. I feel like um, for everyone, that identity kind of changes slightly. Um, and for me, it's it's visual. It's definitely visual, and it's a feeling. And I try to capture that feeling as much as possible in my paintings. Um, so being expressive and using, you know, vibrant colors and posing them, um, almost like stoic but really heroic as well, is something that I really try to do. Um, but as far as like identity. Another thing that does help is just learning about our history, especially like within local history. So in high school, um, one thing that really spoke out to me was the Little Rock Nine. And I've had the honor of meeting Miss Eckford multiple times and just being able to see her and hear from her um, and grow, you know, a bond with her is just, it really just helped me be more proud about my identity and you know the fact that we're both black and just seeing her um, be black as well is, is really inspiring. Um, that also comes in the form of reading. 
I do try, you know, read about history and even the the painful parts of our history because that, that really does have a big influence on the way that I create. Um, and it does, you know, sometimes take a toll as well. The the mural was was hard to do the first time, um, you know, before it was defaced because those names really have a big weight to them. Um, and it's really, it's really eye-opening just to know that, wow, I'm, I'm painting these names and like I identify with them because of, you know, we're, the fact that we're both black and we're both women. Um, so yeah, that identity, it really, really does like shape the way that I work and why I work for sure. Thank you for your transparency. <clears throat> um, let's shift a little bit to the something a little bit more lighter. Um, can we talk about your collaboration with Community Bakery and how that came to be? Absolutely. Um, right now, for the month of February, I'm the featured Black history artist um, for Black History Month with Mosaic Templars Cultural Center. And they um, they saw the cook or well, they saw the um, the card series that I did, and one of the workers was like, "Well, you know, this will look really great on some cookies, and you know, this is something that we do in partnership with Community Bakery to help raise funds for the museum." And so I agreed, and um, they're up at Community Bakery right now for the rest of the month, and. Um, yeah, they just look so beautiful and they're really delicious too. So I'm really happy about, you know, the way that they turned out and the fact that they're going to a good cause. What is the cause? Well, it helps support um, the museum's mission of okay. um, teaching about local Black history and supporting artists. Excellent. Awesome. Um, so when it comes to local artists and being a member of this scene. Um, what do you think that it's going to take to um, increase support and exposure to the arts to younger audiences? Um, you know, you're studying in this market, you are selling art in this market. Um, what is it gonna take to engage more people, including younger audiences? Um, I think one thing that has helped uh, is just taking advantage of social media. Um, pretty much like everyone has social media and <clears throat> being able to share my artwork in the process really like opened up my network and has given me the ability to um, meet other people in the art scene. And as far as like a younger audience, um, I think that it's, it's incredible, you know, how even if I'm painting someone who has passed away way before me, like a younger, um, someone younger can look at the painting and be like, wow, you know, and they can really learn something from it. So I would definitely say that just exposure of artwork to, um, to children, you know, they'll, they'll definitely look and listen. Um, so just, you know, maybe field trips to, to museums would be, would be cool. That reminded me to ask you about your aspiration to um, illustrate a children's book. Um, where did that come from? Where's your process? Are you actively seeking an author? Are you creating images? Do you have a story in mind already? Um, what's the process with that? Um, I, I don't really have a lot of ideas right now. It came from being a child myself and <laughs> creating these different characters and they're always whimsical, they're going on adventures and just wanting to have that, um, to share that creativity, that imagination with, you know, a younger audience. Um, I have a younger sister and just seeing how you know, she lights up when she reads a book or 
um, if I, you know, share a book with her, she's like, oh my gosh, you know, can't wait to read it. And I would just love to have that, um, to be able to, to share something with, uh, you know, a child, you know, specifically a Black child, because being able to see a character, like, with your same skin color um, and your hair texture is really magical, and um, I think, I think it would be wonderful. I would love to do it. I, one of the paintings that I created for the Central Arkansas Library System was titled, um, um, I forgot the title, but <laughs> it was, um, it's a large painting and it shows like a black girl reading and like these different imaginative stories, you know, hopping out of the page. And I just want to, that, that really inspired me to want to create it even more and just have like, a, I don't know, just like a really big colorful book for someone to open it. Awesome. And I mean, it also, like I noticed that your minor was business. Um, it also, it seems like it has been a segue for practicing artists to have a sustainable income stream. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Charlie Palmer, but definitely picking up on the illustrator um, part of the career. So I definitely commend you for that. Um, let's talk about, um, and bef this is my last question before I turn it over to our participants. Please have get some questions ready. I need to get some water. <clears throat> um, but let's just talk about uh, the show at Her and Fine Art. When we see us uh, emerging Arkansas artists. Can you talk about, um, you know, your relationship with the other artists, Ebony and Perion, and how you came to be part of this show and what your experience has been thus far? Absolutely. Um, actually, I met Ebony um, at 7th Street. She has a mural up as well. So I've been able to have a relationship with her for a little over a year now. Um, and Perignon, we met at a, an event um, downtown and, you know, seeing him create art was just awesome. Um, and he was the one that asked me to be a part of the, the exhibit and just the idea behind it of, um, you know, when we see us and just allowing Black artists to create, you know, our own representation of us was just amazing. And I fully stand behind it and I'm so excited that he invited me to be a part of it. They're both amazing, lovely. Um, his artwork is just incredible. Um, and the, the meaning behind it is really, really inspiring as well. And um, Ebony's photos, I love cyan cyanotypes so much. So seeing them up close, especially is just incredible. I definitely agree. Definitely. Um, so now at this time, um, I would like to invite, you know, we have a great group of people and I already have somebody with their hand raised. This is what I'm talking about. I work in education and we're always happy to see a volunteer. Um, so please uh, ask your question, Miss Anita Hart. Okay, sorry, I, I, I couldn't unmute myself. Sorry, I know that we all identify, you know, different ways. Um, our ethnicity, you know, is sometimes a very um, blended one. So how do you, Adasia, balance, you know, all of, all of, what, all of what makes Adasia, Adasia, and channel all of that into your art without feeling um, heavy on one side and light on the other? That's a great question. That is a great question. Um, I do sometimes feel that I'm very heavy on um, my Black side. Um, my grandmother was full Native American, and so I'm fourth Choctaw. 
And sometimes I really feel like I had the knowledge to be able to create artwork um, centered around Native American history or culture. Um, and that's something that definitely in the future I've, I've given, well, I've given thought and hopefully in the future I'll be able to be able to do it. And um, I also, on the subject of, you know, being unbalanced, while, you know, I create so many pieces about the Black experience, um, I also wish that I would tap more into the Black women, like Black women's experience, which is different. Um, and it has another layer to it. And the mural was definitely a stepping stone for it. Um, and it was met with criticism, but it's something that is, you know, it, it needs to be talked about. And um, yeah, so those experiences a whole lot, I think. Once I, I tap into them, will make me more well-rounded. Thank you for your question. Uh, let's see, we had a question from Courtney B. Okay, Adesia, my question for you is, how do you tell the up and coming students being junior high elementary to pursue that passionate art without being discouraged by peers or adults? That's a great question. Um, it is difficult being met with uh, discouragement, um, especially when it comes to either you know majoring in it or pursuing a career in it. And the concerns are valid. It is sometimes hard to um, really have like a good foundation in the art world. I would say that um, creating like a network of friends or um, even just colleagues that you want to build with um, is going to be extremely helpful and just can just doing it um just doing it I would say if you want to major in art you should definitely major in art and um just continuing it and sometimes it doesn't have to be um specifically or you can minor in art and you can always like try and add creativity to whatever you're doing so I would just yeah you just have to push through We have a question from Laura Gray. Hello, Adesia. Um, I actually have a two part question. The first part being this, as a mother, I can remember when my children were small and they were writing on the wall. And I remember that not being a good thing. I remember them actually getting in trouble for actually um, writing on the wall. So my question is, do you think that if we start talking with parents and helping them to understand that we are sometimes snuffing out creativity with our children by not directing them to, to use um, uh, the correct material, um, that, that, that way we can encourage our children? That's my first question. My second question is this, and you may have already answered it. When I look at your artwork, I see so much passion um, in it. And so my question is, which piece of art caused the most emotion in you as an artist? And the reason why it would be the piece that caused the most emotion. Thank you so much for your question. So the first question, that's a tough one. I think I got in trouble for the same exact thing as kids. So um, I would definitely say that uh, for me, it didn't snuff out, you know, that fire, but um, that is that is tough because, you know, I, what I want to say is, well, you can paint it over, you know, but, you know, that I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> um, but maybe dry erase markers or, um, one thing that is really cool, they have um, like refrigerator magnets that you can kind of rearrange. And so it's something that, you know, doesn't end, you know, you can always like change it up. But especially with kids, 
I feel like there is um, this idea that if you um, like, you know, stop them from doing something, you know, it'll always follow them and, you know, they'll never have that creativity again. I, there was an artist, I think it was Picasso, who said that um, all children are born artists, but, you know, as they grow up, they sometimes lose that, you know, creative gene or, you know, so I think it'll always be there and that there are so many different ways that they can channel that creative, you know, creativity. And the second question, uh, my first instinct was to say, uh, was to say anti-woman because there were a lot of tears involved with that mural. But um, another painting that I would say is a portrait that I did of George Floyd on the same day of all the events. And I was painting like ferociously on that portrait and I finished it in about an hour, I think. And um, just, it felt like pure expression on canvas. And I was truly in a flow state and just, I think I had like the news on as well. So everything that was happening was in time and I was also creating. So it felt like, I don't, I don't know, my vessel just like a, my body was a vessel for that creativity in that moment. So thank you so much for your question. Can you talk a little bit more about um, your artistic inspirations? Um, you know, any artists from the past that have influenced your style? Um, and I also am going to take a page from the last person. I have a two-part question. Um, and any artists that you are excited about, any contemporaries that you're excited about right now? Will do, thank you. Okay. Um, one person that I say that it has an influence on a lot of things in our culture is uh, Basquiat and his, his work is just incredible. I actually took an element from his, um, his painting, which is untitled, but it's like a, a crown symbol on top of a dinosaur. And that's something that I put in Badu, a Badu painting, all the swirls in the background. There's also, there's like a, a little crown on top of her head. So I do take a lot of inspiration from some of the symbols that he uses, the, the intense colors that he used, and also like the layering, which is really beautiful. Um, and she's not in, artist but she is a poet and I do love poetry I take inspiration from poetry but Audre Lorde I did um paint her and she's featured in the gallery but um just reading poetry and um you know looking at the words and feeling those words really help as well and as far as contemporary artists one artist that I really look up to, aside from Mr. Deloney, <laughs> is Kehinde Wiley. And I love his paintings, like the scale of them and um, the, the backgrounds that he uses. And sometimes the backgrounds like overlap on the figure. Um, I love his, the, that part of his work, but also how he takes like historical poses and puts just everyday people in them. Um, I just, I love that about him. Another artist that does something similar is Titus Kafer and his paintings, what he does, he'll, he'll also take um, kind of historical photos or historical moments and he'll include a, a black figure. And he also like alters his surface. So if it's a canvas, he'll just cut out the figure on the canvas. Um, and you can really just feel that the absence of the figure and it really just helps with the entire meaning of um, why the figure is there in the first place. Um, oh, and another artist that I just adore is Delita Martin. She's actually um, being featured at Hendrix right now. So 
I'm just able to see her work every day. But she is also um, a mixed media artist. So she uses paint and graphite and printmaking, um, gold leaf on her paintings. And the figures, you know, sometimes they're in the foreground, background, and they overlap each other. But I just, I just you really are able to feel the, the paintings and the, the artwork. And it's, they're just lovely. So, um, I know you have said you were surrounded by art all of your life, and then, you know, you decided to be an art major. Um, how do you feel like, I know, and you've had early art education, you continue to mention Mr. Rex Deloney, I love his work as well. Um, how do you feel like you know, doing art in, at the college level has impacted your work? I, um, I always say it has like a really big impact on me. Um, I have amazing professors, uh, specifically Matthew Lopez, who I've had for a couple of years now is my painting professor. Um, and since painting is my focus for my major, um, I spent a lot of time with him and he really helps me to um, kind of loosen up on my style and be more expressive in a different way as far as like technique. Um, also with the department, I would say that they've done a wonderful job with um, helping me branch out outside of painting. So I've taken a few uh, printmaking classes and a few photography classes. Uh, next semester, I'll be taking, what is it, like a, a 3D class. So they're, um, they're really great about, you know, just having a, a, a wide range of different types of art that we can play around with. So um, I would say it had a, a really big impact. Awesome. Do we have any additional questions or anyone that wanted to make a comment at this time? So we are going to close out. I'm going to give you an opportunity, um, almost beauty pageant style. <laughs> um, tell us why we should be adding a and excuse me, a Deja Cooper to our art collections. Thank you. Um, so with my paintings, I really try and put as much as my personal identity and my personal expression into them with the card series, especially which are being displayed right now. Um, those came from the feeling that there's just so much more to our culture and our history than may seem that we may see. So with that, I just, with the series, I put, you know, a lot of thinking, a lot of research into them and they're reversible too, which is really cool. Um, so yeah. Just let's see. Invite everyone to the show. Tell us more about when we see us. Yeah, so um, please come out to the show. I'll be there on certain Saturdays. Um, if you would like to for me to come up and visit and speak more about my artwork, then you can email me or the gallery. Um, the show will be up until March 19th and it just features three, you know, uh, local Central Arkansas artist, and that uh, the work focuses on how we see ourselves and how we want to be represented as far as artwork. All righty, and so that concludes the artist talk for um, this Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us. Next Sunday, we will welcome 
Miss Ebony Blevins, um, who is working in cyanotype, a uh, photographer. Um, same time, 3 p.m., same Zoom link. We definitely hope that you will join us uh, for her artist talk. Uh, if you'd like to get a reminder and formally register, definitely follow the links. And you can see the entire body of work uh, from Adesia Cooper, Ebony Blevins, and Perion Hurd um, at www.herandfineart.com. Um, we definitely appreciate you for joining us today. Um, thank you, Adesia, so much for your insightful responses. And thank you, everyone, for your awesome questions and for just coming today. We definitely appreciate your presence. Um, well, we hope to see you in the galleries, 1001 Wright Avenue um, in Little Rock, uh, Arkansas through March 19th. And definitely get by Community Bakery um, to get your personalized cookie. Um, and that is all I have. Everyone have a great afternoon. Uh, happy Sunday. Happy Black History Month. Um, have a great afternoon. Bye.